Are you ready to join me in transforming fear to freedom? That's the objective of the show. Are you ready to explore with me and my guests? Are you ready to get into the deep and play? This is where it's at, and that's what it's all about. No medical advice here. Use discernment and decide for yourself if the information is right for you. All views and opinions expressed on this show belong to the individual and are not necessarily shared with the producer of the show. Want more details? Go to letsgetrealchattingwithcatherine.com. Now let's get real and have some fun. Who are we going to explore with today? Come on with me and let's get into the deep. All right, we're back. Let's get real chatting with Catherine, and I'm your host, Catherine Whalen Coston. And if you've been following this show, you know I seek truth. I like to talk about what's going on in the world, and I like to ask the big question why, 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 why? And tonight is no different. We are talking about High River, Alberta, Canada. We're talking about the situation from the flood of June of 2013. And we're talking about a very beautiful presentation from with my guest, Eswina Nye, who has come together with, recruited a lot of beautiful voices to bring together High Hopes for High River, a concert benefit to raise funds and to raise awareness of what's going on in High River. So I wanted to do my part and give you some background by showing you some pictures of High River, some from before the flood, some from recent October 2013 some from during the flood and so I hope you'll enjoy this and share it with people because the more we talk about things the more we can understand our world and make it a better place so thanks for joining me this is not an insignificant event there are many factors involved that are have prevented the people about 13,000 people were forced to evacuate their homes on June the 20th in the early morning around 9 o'clock shortly after that and throughout the day various areas were being evacuated because the water kept rising and turning and changing its direction and in the end it ended up flooding the entire town and outlying areas. It flooded areas that were not in the floodplain, which a lot of people aren't aware of. It flooded areas that had never flooded before. And the force of this river, the, the magnitude, the volume, the speed that it came and took over and swept away everything in its path, everything, people's homes, for a moment, take a look around you, wherever you are, whatever your home is, whether it's a mansion or whether it's a, a, a small apartment, whether you're renting or whether you own, whatever is your stuff in this now moment is what you've collected that you treasure or you wouldn't have it around you. These people lost everything. I mean, they didn't have a toothbrush. In many cases, they had the clothes on their back and thankfully, this did not happen in the middle of the night because although there were three tragic deaths caused by this flood in High River alone, it could have been much worse as far as loss of life. A lot of people lost pets. A lot of people lost their source of employment. The businesses were underwater. In some cases, the landlords just walked away so that the people don't have any place to go back to. The um, renters didn't have a home. The government of Alberta came out right away and said all homes would be restored to the way they were before the floods. And I think that in part, and this is my opinion, this happened because there were preventative measures that were recommended back in 2005 when there was a flood and those measures weren't taken. There were things that could have been done that might have lessened the impact like cleaning out the river so that because it had flooded before because the river every spring has a a very high flow, debris from around the area gets into the river, clogs up and blocks places which create a dam like under the 
railroad bridge, which they are now finally going to remove because it was too low and a lot of debris got stuck there. And that's one of the areas in particular where the river does overflow. So there were preventative things that could have happened and didn't happen. That's one part of it. And people have, because now we're in October of 2013, this is a long period of time that people have been struggling. And it's one thing to struggle and to make progress. You know, people can see a little bit of progress and there are certain businesses who have been able to get back on their feet. But there's a lot more that haven't and some that never will. There are people who have lost everything, everything. And it's not just a matter of starting over, it's where do you start? Where do you begin? These are people's not just homes, but families, um, community, that whole demoralization that has happened in High River. The, the decisions of the, of the powers that be, the different levels of government that, that decided to keep the people out and not allow volunteers in to help to alleviate the water. The places where they burned the water to keep it in, held it in for two weeks, which created a very significant mold problem. There was a lot of things happened to these people, so I, I think it behooves us to become informed, to educate ourselves on what has really happened in High River so that we can give them a hand up. Yes, people get tired of the overwhelm. You know, you see the initial pictures and it's overwhelm for the people there and for the people watching and there's a helplessness. Nothing I can do, especially when the authorities are keeping people out. So this is where we have to take a look at High River and recognize it's a very unique situation and that it's a part of Alberta's history, Canada's history, it's a part of us as Albertans. As you know, as I mentioned in the, in the conversation, the Calgary Stampede was founded in this area. There have been many movies made in this area. There have been, um, this, this town was, was created in the early 1900s by very hardy people, people who are not people who give up. People, these are people who came with very little, uh, a lot of times came from Europe and, um, and settled in the land, became ranchers and farmers. They're part of our food source, they're part of our uh, lifestyle, they're part of the rodeo circuit, they're part of the history, the culture of Alberta. So what happened here is really significant. There's a lot of information that needs to be revealed and a lot more. So uh, I absolutely say, speak up, people. Let us know what's going on because people are, are apt to turn away when they don't think the situation warrants help or they've been told that, you know, um, these people did this to themselves. These people uh, should have known better. Well, Knowing better is really an interesting way to look at things, but many people that considered where they were going to build, where they were going to live, didn't live in the floodplain. So this is a very unique situation. And I think that um, if, you, if you get to know the town, get to understand, I mean, this town has been featured in many movies. Um, there's, it's been used for television shows like uh, Smallville in Superman, um, Superman 3. Smallville was filmed there. The house is still standing where that, that movie was filmed. The house that was used for that. We could call it the Superman house, a lot of people do. And it's, um, it's part of the nostalgia, certainly. It, there are um, uh, Heartland a CBC uh, television production filmed in High River. Caitlin's Way filmed in High River. The movie Carolina Moon, based on the book by Norris Roberts, was filmed in High River. And a lot of the outskirts have been used for the landscape and the Longview area. 
This is what I'm talking about for those of you who are not aware. This is the area we're talking about and I'm not trying to suggest that it's more important than another area but something very different happened in High River and that's the reason why I wanted to show you the pictures of this community small town community that come together to help each other but what's been happening a lot is people pitted against each other one person's needs being seemed less significant than someone else's political colors being shown and flown and and things being used for uh, political gain that's not what this is about and so my opportunity to talk to Ezwina today was about high hopes is about coming together in the spirit of joy in music and she's put together a uh, an amazing group of people, which you'll see their pictures and, and names, to perform uh, musicals, uh, numbers from Broadway to um, movie scores. So it's going to be an uplifting night, an informative night, and it's a way for people to reach out and let these people know they matter. We have not forgotten you. You're important to the landscape. You're important to our lives. When we raise you up and help you to feel important, then you can dig deep and create what you came to create, to use your gifts. It concerns me when people are forced into temporary housing because temporary leaves you hanging. It gives you a sense of not belonging, no roots, and it's, it's an important thing to get people out of temporary housing and into permanent housing, permanent jobs schools that are healthy and can thrive again, communities that can thrive again and rebuild from, from you know, dig deep into that sense of spirit that um, we all have, but we, at times, we need to raise each other up. And I think Edwina's production is part of that. It's her way of reaching out and saying, I see you, you matter, you're important. And she's gathered together some amazing voices to help with that. And it's going to be held in Calgary on October the 25th, that's Friday evening, 7.30 p.m. And we'll talk more about where to get the tickets and um, so forth and all the links will be on the website. I really want to get into this conversation, but I did want to make sure to let you know a little bit of background on this town that has been really devastated and in many cases through no fault of their own. There has been a breakdown, in my opinion, of all levels of government, all levels of planning, preventative measures that could have been taken, uh, violations of people's civil rights ha that happened, the invasion of their homes, the breakdown of their doors, left swinging after the fact so some people's homes incurred much more damage because of that. They thought they had secured their homes and then to have them violated by the very people who are sworn to protect and serve. So there's a lot going on here and I think it's important for us to come together as human beings and do what we can do. And it's not about just giving money, although I must say I'm, I'm at the point where I really truly believe that giving money is something that maybe we can find ways to give that money directly to the people because it appears that sometimes the money goes to these big organizations and doesn't trickle down where it's meant to be. There's been a lot of fundraisers and um, I, I'm, I'm a little discouraged by the fact that these people are still living in, in temporary homes, still waiting for money to repair. When, yes, it's not just that promises have been made and broken, it's that fact, the fact that people are not back in their homes, that the effort has not been put into permanent homes. There's been a big effort put into temporary housing, and that's fine, um, but we've had months now that a lot could have been done and hasn't been done. And I think there's a lot of questions that uh, occur and really answers would be lovely. So, but right now I want to talk about this event and I want to talk about some of the um, information that's come out through Ezwina from her experience and her connections to High River as well. So let's get into this conversation. I feel very grateful to be able to do my part to try to help to lift people's spirits. That is my intention. Well, all right then. Welcome to the show, Ezwina at Nye. 
Yeah. Nigh. Okay. Like yeah. night, but nigh. Ah, very yeah. good. Yeah. All right. Okay. As we and I, uh, my guest today, to talk about the amazing event she's putting on that is called High Hopes for High River. And I'm so excited about this. It seems to be the um, week or maybe it's the month for cultural events in and around Calgary and High River and uh, Alberta. So I'm, I'm just thrilled. This is uh, the third show I think I've done recently about cultural events. So uh, it's so perfect. But your event is a little bit different and comes from a different place. So what is the driving force, Ezrina, for you? What made you want to do this for High River? Well, I guess, like everyone else, when the floods first hit, um, I um, I sat in my house glued to the TV, and I was one of the fortunate ones. I live in high ground, so I was unaffected by the floods. But um, I don't think anyone um, watching could uh, remain, you know, emotionally or uh, you know, detached from it. Um, I am not one of the persons who who was able to go down and help and clean out uh, people's houses and do the actual physical work. Um, so. I, I, you know, at first I reflected I was all ready to to go in and do a fundraiser in July, but um, I, I kind of stepped back. My schedule didn't allow for it. And then when I reflected and prayed about it, I just thought, you know, it's probably better in the months ahead because that's when um, things get forgotten. Um, and not so much forgotten, but I, I think, you know, people's lives uh, people continue. move on. People that are they not right on. affected, they move on. That's right. They move on. And, um, you know, pe- I have friends in High River, and and my, really you look to do what you can do. And God blessed me with a voice, and, and um, I've put on fundraising concerts before, so I thought, well, you know, why not? Absolutely. Um, well, we don't want the people – I mean, the thing that I really feel passionate about is that – it's October and winter's coming and with the situation in High River there's still people who don't have homes there's still it's you know the flooding happened in June so that was the big media blitz was about what my goodness look what's happening as we are standing here helpless to the river but there's some very unique things happened in High River that helped to postpone the remedies and they're still working on remedies now so i think it's just perfect to have this coming out now, High Hopes for High River, and also noticing that your um, the proceeds will go through Samaritan's Purse for High River Rebuilding. So that's a very beautiful thing, too. Yes, I wanted to make sure that the funds were properly allocated. And I mean, realistically, Catherine, this, in the end, this isn't about uh, money. Um, you know, because realistically, I'm I'm a local singer. Um, I'm not really a big name, so you know, people see oh, a concert by Ismina, who is she? You know, and, and it's probably not anything I would like. So, um, really, why am I doing this? It it was my way of showing to my friends that I care. Mm-hmm. So, when I'm having this concert, I'm inviting people to come and just say, you know, show you care. Mm-hmm. I, you know, it. it it's well, and coming together in, yeah. in the spirit of music, in that high vibration yeah. of music, is always a powerful thing. And I think that's where, if we really look at our history, you know, as human beings on the planet, music is what has taken us through wars, through, you know, death, birth, um, life celebrations. Music is always there. It's always been a part of it, whether, we're, whether we have an actual gift of voice, as you do, or whether we're just, you know, singing in the shower. It's part of our lives, and, it, and it's so amazing that you're bringing together so many talented people. Um, it's, it's going to be quite a, quite a concert. I, I <clears throat> would ask you not I, to I'm... downplay your talents here, because <laughs> this, is, this is looking pretty awesome. It, it's you know I'm blessed with um, amazing uh, I guess amazing colleagues and friends. Um, you know when I I put forward the idea they've they've um, given you know they've said yes right away. In fact, one of them who's quite well known in, in Calgary, um, Tony Reno, he used to sing the anthem for the Calgary Flames games. I mean he has three events this this uh, two weeks, um, and but there was no hesitation of saying I'm too busy or anything. Um, if it's a date, I can be there. I, you know, I'm there. Right. And um, so everyone has just stepped forward. And even in terms of donations of, of gifts from a silent auction, I'm just blown away. It's like every time I open my email, 
I, it, it's a notification. Oh, somebody wants to donate this to your to your silent auction. Um, you know, so yes, I, and I'm I'm excited. I, I know I sort of downplay it, but I am excited about the programming. I think. It's oh fun yeah, too. and I, it really you know, shows what happens yeah. when one person steps forward with an idea. You know, sometimes we all have our little piece of the puzzle. One person has the idea, another person has a talent, and you know, and that's how communities are built. That's how people do come together to raise. Um, raise their their spirits and and really get empowered so i i think it's awesome that um and i don't know that i can pronounce all of the other names but i would love to let people know who's because these the, what i understand is you've got everything from broadway to um opera it's yes, going to be I, I do um yeah and just to give you a brief line up ainsley soutier she's a young singer up and coming um, she's hoping to, uh, you know, branch off into an operatic career, and uh, she's just. Uh, if you, you can see all the uh, singers' bios on my website there. Mm-hmm. Um, Tony Tony Reno, I've already mentioned. Um, Marissa Marissa Taylor, she's been a winner um, on a provincial level of Kiwanis. Um, she specializes in musical theater. Um, a lot of these connections I've made through. Uh, I still take voice lessons, even though I, I've been singing, you know, for over 20 years. Because you can never, um, you know, not you learn. You can't neglect it, right? <laughs> exactly, you can't neglect. A lot of these uh, are, are my fellow students, so we all have um, wonderful training behind our, our talents. And um, yeah, so it's a it's a hot. I wanted to make sure that it was a, a, an evening of. Uh, just lighthearted entertainment because I'm, I've invited you know residents of High River to come and I've told my friends High River if they can't afford it just come because it's really to take them out of where they've been you know just mm-hmm. even if it's just for a brief moment that they can have an hour to just you know relax and sit back and just have someone sing for you. Oh, how, um, so, that's yeah. an awesome thing too. Exactly what you're saying, it's having someone lift you up and music will do that for sure so this is a great way to reach out and so the people of high river who if they can't afford it um what happens they do they just uh, let they some... can you know i i've told them just just show up and if you have an id just show, showing that you're you know they'll let you in that you um, live in high river yeah that, that you, you have in a, high river Okay, so yeah. that's good for them yeah. to know. And anyone yeah. else who, you know, can afford to, and, and because it's really, your tickets are reasonable, $20 a person in advance, 25 at the door. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me. And, and, and you can. And it, and, go ahead. And it's available say, online. Right. Uh, and, you can buy them online or else there's several locations in town that you can, in Calgary, that you can get them. Um, again, I have some wonderful door prizes. In fact, my company just donated um, several uh, swag packs that they've given me, um, and the, the, they're valued at $100. So one of them I've, I've given over to a door prize. One of them um, you can bid for it at the silent auction. But I, my door prizes are ranging right now from $20 to $100. Um, so, Very you, nice. you know, you come in, and for $20, um, you have a very good chance because there's only like a couple of hundred people coming. Your chances of winning something is extremely good. You get entertained. You'll probably you'll have uh, some. There'll be some light refreshments there. Um, so I mean, yes. What can you get for twenty dollars? I think it's a fabulous deal. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's, it's, I think it's the the fact that people can come together. You have great performers who are offering their voice, and then you have the community or the people that come together to also, um, you know, there's a, you're in that vibration, and it just creates ripple effects of of uh, positive energy, which which releases all that potential. So I think it's fabulous. So where's the concert actually being held? It's going to be held at a local church in Calgary. It's called. Canadian Martyrs Church, and the address is 835 Northbound Drive Northwest, and the number to the church is uh, 284-3311. Tickets are available at the church. Um, It's, again, also available at my website, which is www.eswina, that's E-S-W-I-N-A dot com. Okay, fantastic. And... um, so what I are are all of your people that are um presenting all your performers are they all doing donating their time and talent or yes. did you have no yes? um 
all of them are, um, ex with the exception for our companies, because she's playing for all of us and she's had to do extra work. But she's charging, her, um, her, it's she's donating half of time, so she's basically charging me uh, a, 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 her rate at half price. So right. So she's um, accompanying yeah. everyone. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, that's a, but that's yeah. a gift too. You know, I'm it not is, trying to. Just, gift. I'm not trying no, to downplay I, it. Yeah. I'm just wanting to make let because people, you know, that's the thing about my show. I like to go for you know, all of the details and let people decide for themselves. But I think exactly. it's just a, a wonderful opportunity. Uh, a night out, Friday evening, mm -hmm. October 25th, 2013. It starts at 7:30, and then your doors it says open 6:30 for si for the silent auction. Yes, yeah, so the right? auction will go through the show, that, so all through the night. But, you know, I want to give people a chance to come in and have a good look at the items, um, you know, before they have to get seated for the show. So, um, mm -hmm. And parking parking is a little, um, a bit of a, a nightmare there, but I'm uh, negotiating with the school next door to use their, their parking lot. So hopefully I will have um, volunteers in place to direct uh, parking. So. Okay. Um, give yourself a little time to find parking and then time to look through the silent auction and uh, to get a good seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's that's a very good idea. And um, also, so people can go to the website, uh, www.ezwina.com, to get information. You can get all the information on the tickets, on yes. the music, mm -hmm. on um, who's performing, and exactly. um, everything. <clears throat> so I think that's just fabulous that, that you're able to do this. And I, So you don't actually live in High River yourself, but you have friends who do. Yes, I do. Uh, that's correct. In fact, I just uh, phoned one of my friends and I said, you know, what's going on? I just need some in, uh, updates. And I talked to a friend of mine who actually, um, uh, she and her husband run the lo uh, one of the local chiropractic offices. And she, so she gets a stream of people coming in every day. Um, and the latest story she told me was about uh, a, a local resident and he has adopted uh, two Down syndrome children and now these children are adults, so but you know realistically they will never be independent. They live with him. Right. Um, the government offered him thirty thousand for his house and ten thousand for his business. Oh and my goodness. So for, uh, yes, and and out of that he's supposed to rebuild his life. So if you imagine that he has two children who are grown up, he's not really exactly a spring chicken, and um, he will probably spend the rest of his life having to work to make up mm -hmm. and I'm not I, I don't even know how you're going to do that yeah uh, or in debt, an incredible debt on people's backs this is why exactly. I wanted to to talk to you and to raise awareness and I'm do what I can to um, raise awareness to what's going on because there's been a lot of you know people that don't understand um, there was a lot of controversy over a letter that was written to the editor in the Calgary newspaper recently Calgary Herald and it was quite arrogantly um, uh, written in the sense of total ignorance of what is really going on. It was asking the people to basically stop complaining. And I think that this is where, you know, the media does tend to follow the very sensational stories but doesn't follow up. And, yes, people, you know, they were able to get the stampede going in Calgary after the flooding, but they had – access and they had the they had the wherewithal they had the leadership they had a lot of things that high river didn't have namely access the people of high river were totally i mean there were roadblocks the police the army i mean the army even had guns on their on the equipment they had they didn't have guns in calgary these are important things for people to understand people couldn't get in there and address their their issues themselves so they it was taken out of their hands totally and now we have um, a situation and we're in October and people are still not in their homes and still, you know, trying to find where to get the money and insurance companies that won't pay or insurance companies that um, are only paying a certain portion, like you say, getting $30,000 for a house. Where can you get a house for $30,000 today in North America, in, in, in Calgary, in Alberta? So it's really important well, that we hear the people's stories. 
Exactly, and and I think you're correct. You know, in that um, the news only if it's not going to sell that many papers or whatever, you know, that's the story's over, right? Mm-hmm. And um, it, it's it's I can't imagine. Like I I I've spoken to Samaritans Purse. They're going to be on site at my show. To if you want to donate more, they'll be there, and as well as to um, they're they're going to be speaking to answer some questions. I, I've, I've given them a five minute slot. And also a resident of High River will be there speaking from their perspective of what it's like to be in High River and what they're seeing. Um, A a friend of mine who's a realtor, he has clients. uh, The wife is 64, her husband is 74. Um, They've been off at 70,000 to um, get the house in order uh, to repair it, which it's impossible. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for a new house, having to cash in at that age uh, their entire RSP in mm-hmm. order to afford a new house. Um, well, and and people, you know, seem to have the opinion that, well, these people did this to themselves. And that is not the case. Um, the reality here is that is that the worst, hardest hit area, that water was contained not just by the flow of the river. It was held in there by man-made forces which is what destroyed that community. It wasn't just that the floodwaters came through. That water, it, it, these people didn't build on the floodplains. They didn't, they, they built away from it on purpose, and they are the ones who've been hardest hit. And, the, mm-hmm. and it's not just a matter of nature. This is interference by humans, and also, you know, that the facts are that the government of Alberta was given recommendations to address the last time there was a flood and they didn't so and then you have the federal government and the rcmp violating their homes on top of that so and i'm not trying to get all political these are the facts these people have had to deal with every possible uh hardship and violation be it man-made or or you know nature and now and they're trying to rebuild their lives so I think we owe them some compassion to hear their stories and to try to do what we can to uplift them and support them in whatever ways we can. I agree. And I, I, like you, Catherine, I've actually, um, a couple of my friends who are selling tickets have encountered sort of a very, very negative. It's like, um, you know, even if not spoken, it's been the dirty looks like, you know, like I've had enough high river, yeah. you know, why should I raise money for them, etc. Et um, and I, I think before you, you get to that part, you know, you everyone needs to be responsible and do the research, you know, go out mm-hmm. and find out for yourself and not just buy into what you, the headliners, you know, yep, that's um, you exactly need to find right. out what's, what's, what's really happening. And it's everything, you know, I think the internet sometimes, um, it's good and bad, you know, sometimes people just latch on to one story and then they spread it. And I said, no, you need to find out whether that's true or not. Mm-hmm. Um, so I urge you, you know, come out and find out. I think Samaritan's Purse is a, a very credible organization. That's why I chose to partner with them. You know, come out and hear what they're trying to do. They project that um, it will take at least 18 months, and that is uh, what they're trying to do is to help rebuild two houses a month, and it's going to take them at least, uh, they see it in terms of 18 months to two years uh, mm-hmm. for, to help rebuild High River. Well, I think there's a lot of background stories, uh, before stories and during and after that really need to be told. And, you know, I would encourage if any of the um, mainstream media is really interested in the, what the people need to know and what people want to share, get on the ground. Get on the ground and talk to real people and find out what's really happening in people's lives. Because, uh, you know, people have been encouraging me to, um, to do that. But the, the reality is I don't have the resources that the big media has. Um, you know, I don't have a crew, so I do my best to um, share awareness, and I'm not into hype or fear or, or sensationalizing anything. I am a seeker of truth, and because I really think that's how we're going to rebuild this world and create the world that I think is possible, which is an exquisite world. And in that world, there is no us and them. It's We're all one, and that's where I feel like this is this is divisive, this um, pitting, you know, one city against the other when, or, you know, seeing what Calgary, well, look, Calgary got back up, but Calgary is, first of all, has, you know, uh, over a million people live there. Um, it, it, we're talking about like 13,000 people in High River. 
And then when after the floodwaters started to recede and it was fairly safe to do so, Calgary called out the volunteers and let them at it. And people just dove in to help and get the water out as fast as possible so they wouldn't have the mold problems. I'm not saying they don't have, didn't lose, some people lost stuff, you know, their homes in, in, in Calgary. But in High River, they lost their homes, they lost their, their, um, treasures, their artifacts, they lost businesses, they lost their hospital, they lost everything at the same time, and then were prevented from doing anything, and on top of that, with the water being held in, it created a mold problem, which has created what I call, as what has been told to me, is called the flood cough. And, you know, when you look at the the newspaper, they're saying, well, the air quality is okay. Well, then why is this flood cough going around why is, you know, there's been healthcare workers I've talked to who said they don't even want to go into certain areas without masks on because it, for their health, but if they go in with masks on, they feel bad because the people living there are living there without masks on. And yeah. so these are things that people need to know about. So well, you're going to have there's a, a high, Yeah, there's a high incidence of um, the, the need for asthma medication has gone up. And that's one of the areas I was told that if you want to give money, you know, give money to buying asthma medication. If, if you say, like they say, if the air quality is, is okay, then why is the incidence of needing asthma medication gone up mm-hmm. um, all of a and sudden? The, and the other part of it is, I, I, it is my understanding, and I don't have this uh, in writing from anyone, but that the Red Cross has collected um, a lot of money. My point is, I know that they have been the Red Crosses, you know, nation, nationwide has collected money for High River, and it has helped people pay for hotel rooms and things, to, to, you know, for a place to live temporarily. But I think that it's time for people to start looking at reality. That was a temporary fix. Um, these um, they need uh, uh, real homes. We're talking Canada winter. And by the looks of the, some of the snow we've already had uh, in the mountains, this we could be getting a lot of snow and a lot of cold this winter. People need to be protected from the shelter, and they deserve better. This is Alberta, Canada, one of the richest provinces in the country, one of the richest countries in the world. Um, you know, we are giving money to third world nations and other nations. Um, it may be politically savvy, but we got to help our own people. That's uh, it, you, uh, charity always starts at home. I, I was learned that when I was a little girl. <laughs> you know, you have to look after your own, and um, and and we have enough. We have enough in this country to uh, rebuild this. So, are people going to have the opportunity to chat with um, some of the residents and stuff? Will there be a little bit of mingling happening, or how do you see this yes. evening? Well, there will be, and that's why I. Um I have set aside, you know, time for uh, refreshments and after the show, so that so the show itself probably will not last longer than um, an hour. So it's, it's sort of the first half. There'll be an intermission, and then there'll be uh, talks by a Samaritan's Purse as well as High River residents. So there's an opportunity for uh, people to stay after to talk to Samaritan's Purse, to talk to my friends who are coming up from High River to ask them, you know, what's happening, um, yeah. what they see every day, so that they can get a first-hand. P- account of what's actually happening there instead of just the stories from the media or non-stories from the media. Mm-hmm. Um, I tell people, you know, can you imagine, like, in Calgary, people live tend to live in their, their districts or whatever. Just imagine going to the stores, if you've lived there like half your life or, or all your life and you just walk down to the corner store and then in High River you can't even do that anymore because what you used to walk down to doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. And try and imagine that. Try and imagine mm-hmm. going to your favorite spot wherever it is in a park or something and sitting there and not being able to do that. You know, you no mm-hmm. longer have that because that place no longer exists. Mm-hmm. That's right. It, the whole landscape has changed. I mean, exactly. the, the the river, when you look at the river by that bridge um, the, behind the Sobeys, it's, there's, I mean, the river's totally different now. It's taken out huge chunks of land, and a lot of that land ended up in other people's homes backyards um wasn't it wasn't just the the river and the river you know when it was flooding it flooded the feedlot it flooded all the agriculture around so what you know it wasn't just sewer backup it was all these things pesticides herbicides fetal you know 
um, well, fe- feces yeah. from the feedlot, that kind of stuff. They, I mean, we're talking about all the pollutants that could possibly happen were flooding the area. So this is not a small thing, you know. Well, exactly. And like my friend Bill was just telling me, he says the children's pe- playground, it's buried in four inch deep of mud right now. He said in order to, to get that children's playground up and running again, it's probably going to be necessary to dig down between six inches to a foot underneath all that mud in order to be able to, like you say, rectify and get rid of all the pollutants and everything that has been settled on there. Exactly. So it's it's not just a matter of just even removing mud, you know. It's, mm-hmm. it's the real building process requires more than just taking, scraping stuff away. Absolutely. And, and you know, it, it it would be amazing to be able to have the kind of volunteer efforts that happened in, in Calgary for High River, but that was prevented. That wasn't the people that stopped that. That was prevented by levels of government. So I look at, in our country, we have several levels of government here. We have the federal government, the uh, provincial government, the municipal government, as well as the town. And everybody has, there's enough blame to go around for everyone. And that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for people to be accountable responsible, be transparent, and really address this, not for political gain, but because it's the right thing to do, you know, and that, uh, that will uplift people, that will, we can see what, what's possible when people come together, that's why I love, you know, high hopes for High River, you bet, absolutely, it's, um, this town has been, been here for a long time, and it's, it's a big part of, actually, Alberta history, I mean, you look at the Stampede, um, which is a big event for Calgarians, and a lot of people internationally come and celebrate the Stampede, the rodeos and whatever. High River was a place where a lot of that began, Longview, mm-hmm. and the people that settled in the area. That's, that's the area. You know, you're t- when you see the mountains and the, and the beauty and, and the picturesque scenes in uh, the ranch lands, in a lot of movies that have also been made here, made in High River and around the surrounding areas. That's what you're talking about. That's what's been destroyed. And I think it's something that people need to realize. So yes, I, I'm, I'm, I, yes, go ahead. No, I absolutely agree with um, what you're saying, you know, Catherine. It's it's part of us, you know. I, I don't think you can just say, well, I'm a Calderian or I'm, you know, we're all Albertans and, and that's really why I'm I'm doing this. Like I called it High Hopes basically because it wasn't about the money, it was about hope. And I think mm-hmm. it's about giving hope. Because when you have no hope I don't think you can you can go on. That's right. Um, and it's and it's important I- fundamentally that we we support each other. That's the key. I think by doing this, it's, it isn't, you're right, it's not about the money, but it's when people, it's the, it's the um, bomb, I'll say, the, the salve that you put on the wound, you know, that really, um, for, for the, with all the people that are saying negative things, it's something like this that lets these people know, we see you, you matter, you are important to us. We're, yes, we're Albertans, we're Canadians, but first of all, we're human beings. And we have to, you know, sometimes you have to dig deep to find your compassion, but um, I think it's important to do so. And we do it best when we come together in music, in song, in, you know, that kind of energy. So I'm really excited about this event, um, Ismina, and I'm really impressed with your commitment to bring it forward and for all the reasons that you are. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, um, I've just been, it's just been a blessing to me because, I've seen people reach out, you know, I think, mm-hmm. like, again, I say the generosity of people when I told them that I'm doing this, uh, they've reached out, um, in turn, because of that, I'm able to put this on, um, it blesses me, so, when, when my, even my friends in High River, I said, it's a small thing I do, because I've just, like you said, you know, I just asked the question, mm-hmm. and people have come forward, so my question right now is just that, you know, just come, come and, and show you care, that's, Really, all I ask is just come and share an evening and uh, show you care. Yeah, I love it. Well, I, I really appreciate you being with me today and to share this information. So once again, if you want tickets, go to uh, com, and you get all the information. The event itself is being held on Friday, October 25th. 
2013 at 7.30 p.m. The silent auction starts at 6.30, and as Zwina was so kind to let us know, parking might be an issue, so um, get there early and so that you can um, get a good seat and check out what's in the silent auction and have an enjoyable evening. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, Zwina. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me on the show, Catherine, and I appreciate um, all that you're doing to try and get the word out. You're very welcome. It's been my absolute pleasure. All right, and that was an amazing show with Ezwina Nye and her production of High Hopes for High River. And I hope you will share this link and share the information with everyone you know so that they can know what's really going on out here and to help participate and bring your high energy to these people to raise them up. Let's lift these people up and create something new and vibrant and juicy and wonderful. All right, and check out the show page for all the listings of all my shows. Let's get real, chattingwithcatherine.com. It's been an absolute delight. Until next time, take care. Wasn't that amazing? Thank you to my guests for sharing with us today. Thank you for watching. Feel free to share the link. You can join us for live shows by going to Let's Get Real Chattingwithcatherine.com and listen to the replays from the show page, preview guests, and explore links to our Facebook fan page, WordPress blog, and more. We are creating an exquisite world. Until next time, take care.